Hey guys, welcome to this product modeling tutorial. In today's video, these are the following topics that we will cover. They are also mentioned in the timestamps in the description. We will begin by adding the references to the software. We will be using Blender software to model this product. Press Shift plus A to add the image as a reference. Adding the references helps us to model the product more precisely. Now that we have added the references, it's time to model the product. Press Shift plus A to add a cube again. Move the cube to match the reference. Take your time to scale and adjust the dimensions. Now scale the cube in the Y axis. Go into edit mode and apply the loop cuts. Select all the top and bottom vertex points and scale them inwards. Do the same with the middle vertex points. Now select the top face and hit X to delete it. Select all the vertex points on the top plane, E to extrude and S to scale. Make sure to check that the hole matches the reference image. Once you're satisfied with how the shape looks, you can go ahead and add in the modifiers. We are using the Solidify and Bevel modifier. This will give more definition and smoothness to the shape. Select the top hole vertices and E to extrude it upwards. Now that we have the shape of the base bottle ready, you can go ahead and apply the solidify modifier. This modifier will add the thickness to the bottle. Next, you shift A to add in a circle. Go into edit mode, hit E to extrude and extrude it upwards. To ensure that the 3D model looks more realistic, it is important to add in all the minute details. Take your time to model every part precisely. Once the upper nozzle has been modeled, go into edit mode and add in two loop cuts. Now select the two center vertices and scale it on the Z axis. Next, select this face, hit I to insert and E to extrude. Do this one more time, but this time make sure to extrude it outwards. We will use I to insert one final time and E to extrude the hole. Once you're satisfied with the shape, make sure to apply all the modifiers. Next, to make the cap of the perfume bottle, add in a cube and scale it to meet the reference image. Scale it along the X, Y and Z axis. Next, select the bottom face and delete it. Now select all the bottom vertex points, hit E to extrude and S to scale, then scale it in the Z axis. Now go ahead and apply the bevel and subdivision modifier. Next we'll model the inner pump mechanism. Select any circle from the nozzle and shift D to duplicate it. Next head into edit mode, extrude and scale it to meet the reference image. To apply the materials, go into the material preview mode. Select the new material and name it metallic. Adjust the base color and make the metallic value all the way up to 1. Reduce the roughness to 0 0.280. So the next part we'll use a PBR texture. I use mine from CG Bookcase. They have tons of PBR materials. Once you have found the desired material that you like, download it. Duplicate the first material that we created and rename it. Now. Go into X-ray mode and select the top faces of the bottle cap. 
Once you have these faces selected, make sure to assign the new material that you have selected. Under the material shader, press Ctrl, Shift and T to add in all the maps. Apply the same metallic material to the pump head. Now for the pipe material, we are going to use a plastic. So reduce the roughness to a very low value and the index of refraction to be 1.4. Make the transmission weight all the way up to 1. Apply the similar glass material to the bottle. At every step, always check if your model matches your reference. In our case, it does. Now let's go ahead and add in the blue tint that the bottle has. Go to the shading editor. Press Shift A and select color ramp. Press Ctrl and T to add in the mapping and the texture coordinates. Tinker around with the color ramp and select the value colors that suit your model. Adjust the values of rotation, location and scale. This step is a bit time consuming, but once you have the right values, this extra detail would look awesome. That's how the finished bottle looks like. All you need is a black and white image of the text or the logo. Select the face where you want to apply the logo. Duplicate the material so that you're not affecting the base material. Press Shift A to add in a displacement node and an image texture. Plug in the color to the height and select the image. Make sure the image is turned from clip to extend and the color space to non-color. Plug this into the displacement. Do the same for the bottom branding as well. This is how it looks in the render preview. The render settings can vary depending on your system's configuration. Switch to cycles and turn on GPU compute. For the viewport, I keep the samples low to 16 and for the final render 128. Next, go to the scene properties and make sure the compression is all the way to zero. Go to film and check the transparent box if you want a transparent background. Head down to performance and select the tiling to be 128. Now switch to the render preview. Go to the world settings and select environment texture. Over here, you can add in your HDRIs. For product shots, I mostly use indoor studio lightings. HDRIs help you to enhance your overall scene lighting as it mimics the real world lights. This is how the product looks like with an HDRI turned on. Next, let's reduce the strength of the HDRI so that we can add in different lights to see how they react with our model. Shift A to add in a point light. Increase the power and the radius. Place the light behind the bottle. This light separates all the edges and shows us the silhouette. Press F12 to render your image and preview it. Modeling the box is really easy. Press Shift A and add in image as a mesh plane. You can find many images that have packaging seam lines online. Press Ctrl plus R to add in the loop cuts. These will act as seams for our package. Press K to bring in the knife tool and cut the fine details. Take your time to precisely cut all the details. Once you are done, you can go ahead into your face select mode and delete all the unnecessary faces. Now tab into edit mode and select one for vertex select. Select this vertex 
and press Shift S to go cursor to selected. Now change the transform to 3D cursor. Next go into face select mode by pressing 3. Select all these faces and press R to rotate it along the Z axis. Do this for all the other faces. This is how your final result should look like. Next, go into the shade editor. Add in an image. As the image is not correctly positioned, we need to UV unwrap it. Go into the UV editor. Select U and project from view. And that's it. You have your box ready. Adjust the height and scale of your models on the go. Press Shift A to add in a camera and to open the menu and select camera to view. Now press 0 to go into your camera view. Adjust your camera angles. Once you're satisfied, press F12 to render the image. Animation in Blender is relatively easy. Press Shift A to add in an empty. Select the box empty. Now go ahead and scale the empty box on the X, Y and Z axis to perfectly fit the perfume bottle. Next, go into X-ray mode and select all the parts of the bottle. Finally select the empty. Press Ctrl plus P and select Object Keep Transform. Now whenever you move this empty, the entire bottle would move along with it. Now pull up your timeline. Select the empty box and on the first frame, press I to add in a keyframe. Select Location and Rotation. Next, go to frame 50. Rotate the box to your liking and add in another keyframe. Do this multiple times for different locations and rotations. Once you're satisfied, press spacebar to view your animation. I will explain the water simulation with a simple example. Add in a plane and make sure to apply the scale. Next, go into edit mode and subdivide this. More number of subdivision equals better flow in water. But keep in mind that higher number of subdivisions would result in a higher number of computational time. Next, add in any object. In this case, I've added a UV sphere. In our case, this is going to be the perfume bottle. But this can be any object of your choice. Now let's try the easy water simulation with just physics. Select the plane and go to the physics setting. Click on dynamic paint. Add in a new canvas and turn the surface type to waves. Now select the primary object and hit dynamic paint again. But this time instead of canvas add the brush. And that's it. It was that simple. Select your object and move it around. You can see it interacts with the plane but it doesn't give the water like effect. You can only view this effect when you play the timeline. So hit spacebar to play and now if you move, you can see that this behaves like a perfect water simulation. We can easily create ripples and waves using this.